This is Mario Kart Wii. Notice anything different about it? It's nothing to do with the gameplay. Still don't see it? Let's rewind a bit. What I forgot to mention is that this is the PAL version of Mario Kart Wii, which changed a lot of the text within this version of the game, ranging from subtle changes to quite obvious ones. While not as prevalent as it once was, games released in multiple regions used to have changes made to it for a variety of reasons, whether it be to avoid age readings or to add additional content. There's a lot of games that have regional based changes made to them, so let me take you through the ones I find most intriguing. Rayman 2 was initially released for the N64, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, and Windows platforms in late October of 1999 and throughout the year of 2000, and was later re-released as an enhanced port in 2001 as Rayman Revolution on the PS2. These mark the only times where Rayman 2, or Rayman Kaizukusen Kara no Dashitsu, as it's known in Japan, had physical copies released within the region. Within these Japanese versions, there lies a wide variety of differences. Most infamously, the color of Rayman's body, which changed from purple to blue. Other characters such as Sam and Jano had purple aspects of their character design altered, and Lai's character design had a complete overhaul. So for those who grew up in Japan and played Rayman 2, you probably would have known Rayman for his distinct blue body, rather than his purple body he's widely known for everywhere else. The reasoning for these changes ties back to Japanese culture, where the color purple represented death, with villains often seen representing the color within their clothes and skin color. And so naturally, the localization team changed the color of Rayman's body in order to convey Rayman as a protagonist and hero of the game. Anyways, enough of the history lesson, I think you get the point. Speaking of 3D platformers... Sonic Adventure marks the fourth 3D outing within the franchise and second 3D outing within the mainline series. After two years of development time and a console switch from the collapsing building that was the Sega Saturn to the soon to collapse building that was to be the Dreamcast, Sonic Adventure was eventually released in Japan on December 23, 1998. After nine months of localization efforts, Sonic Adventure was released in the US, Europe, and Australia and re-release in Japan as Sonic Adventure International, which is essentially the same as the European release, minus a few small changes. While on paper the differences between the original Japanese release and the final international release seem mostly the same, looking closely into the smaller details reveals a lot of changes and fixes Sega wanted to have within the original Japanese release, but couldn't due to time constraints from having to meet a Christmas 1998 deadline. A lot of small changes between the original Japanese release and the international releases were made during the 9 months of localization. Let's start with the title screen. In total, there are 4 iterations of the title screen. One for the Japanese release, one for the US 1.0 release, one for the US 1.1 slash EU release, and one for the international release. Going further into the menus, we can see that the Japanese version is missing the emblem results options within the trial mode menu, and going even further, we can also see that the way levels are sorted between the two versions are different. In the Japanese version, instead of being sorted via the chronological order in that character's story, it's instead sorted via the internal level ID. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Finally, in the options menu, the international versions allow you to swap between the Japanese and English dub, and also allows you to choose your subtitle language, with the choices being Japanese, English, German, Spanish, and French, something the original Japanese release lacks. Going into gameplay, we see another interesting change made specifically to Sonic and his shoes. In the Japanese version, when Sonic reaches top speed, his shoes have this blurring effect applied to emulate motion blur and also have this stretchy effect applied to his shoes. In every other version of the game, the blur effect was removed, though the stretching effect was retained. Even though this effect was removed from every other version of the game, and subsequently the parts of Sonic Adventure 1, this blur effect can be restored with the use of mods on the Steam release of SADX. 
Another change was made to the international versions of SA1, with this one being the most infamous. Within the original Japanese version of the Casinopolis stage contains a billboard of a cowgirl holding a 3D martini glass, which she waves up and down. This sign also has a... unique property. I'll let you see for yourself. You can already imagine why this was removed in later releases of the game, though it's still restorable with mods on the Steam release, suggestive sounds and all. Fun fact, the cowgirl sign was originally meant to be more provocative. Within the files of the Sonic Adventure Auto Demo, a CPU demo showcase of select levels that would be in the game, contains a very early version of what would become Casinopolis. Within it contains a rough 3D model of a bunny girl and a bar-like area next to it. Again, you can probably imagine why this was changed during development. Real quick before I move on, I want to go into a small side tangent about the US releases. Uh, skip to here if you don't care enough about this. So the cutting room floor page mentions two separate US releases. A 1.0 version that was launched with the Dreamcast in the US, and a 1.1 version that presumably is identical to the European version. While researching this video, I tried finding any sort of differences between these versions. Eventually, I ended up asking who I think is the most knowledgeable person on this Speeps Highway for clarification, and this is what she told me. The main difference between US 1.0 and 1.1 is the title screen, where 1.0's title screen is static while 1.1's is animated. If the text language is set to Japanese on 1.0, it will load the Japanese version of the title screen, whereas 1.1 slash EU will stay the same, though technically they do load a different yet identical title screen. Thanks again to Speep Sideway for providing me with this information. Our channel will be linked in the description and in the little card thing. Check around when you get the chance. No else changes made during localization. Sonic CD. When localizing the game for the US, Sega got Spencer Nielsen, David Young, and Mark Crew to redo a large majority of the soundtrack, because Sega of America didn't want the Japanese slash PAL version of the soundtrack to be mixed in with all of the EDM music coming out in the US in 1993, instead wanting a more rock-oriented feel with the soundtrack. So unless you had both versions of the game, there was no way to listen to the other version of the soundtrack back then in the US. Well, most of it anyway. Because in the US version of the game, for the past versions of all stages, the music was never redone. The reasoning behind this was to save on space as past themes play through PCM, while every other track plays through Redbook. Obviously, with the advent of YouTube and music streaming services, this is easier than ever before, and even in the modern 2011 re-release of Sonic CD, you have the option of swapping between the US and Japanese slash PAL versions of the soundtrack. Hmm. Says here and Nielsen did work on Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Interesting. Super Smash Bros. Melee is the second entry in the Super Smash Bros. series of games. Releasing on the 21st of November 2001, the game intended to improve on the established formula from the N64 game by introducing new mechanics, speeding up the overall game, and accidentally birthing a grassroots competitive scene that still sees play over 20 years from its release date. After the completion of the 1.02 version of NTSC Melee on February 13th, 2002, Nintendo went back to work refining the game in terms of buffing, nerfing, and fixing characters and glitches still within the NTSC 1.02 version of the game. We would come to know this version of the game as the PAL version, released in Europe and Australia on May 24th, 2002 and May 31st, respectively. The PAL version of Melee mostly contains changes to characters and other localization things such as extra languages or changing the measurement system from Imperial to Metric. There are a good amount of changes and improvements made to this version of the game, such as faster loading times, among other things. For time's sake, I will only be covering character changes that I find interesting. 
so nothing like the changes made to trophies will be mentioned. Plus Awesome Sauce already has a good video on the trophies of Melee already, so watch that instead. Let's start with the poster boy of competitive Melee, Fox. Fox was given two big nerfs in the PAL version. First, Firefox's distance was nerfed slightly, making it cover less distance than its NTFC Firefox, though more than Firebird, Falco's recovery. And second, his up smash was nerfed to have less base knockback and less knockback growth, meaning instances where up smash would kill an NTSC may not on PAL. Another change from NTSC to PAL are changes made to Marth's and Falco's down air. Falco's down air was changed to head at the Sakurai angle instead of the angle of 290 degrees. For the unaware, in Smash, the Sakurai angle is an angle where the angle the opponent is sent at depends on if said opponent is on the ground or in the air. In this instance, Falco's late hit of dare will send opponents up and away instead of down at 290 degrees. Meaning shit like this could happen. But I don't think to let that last forever. Falco. Marth's tippered down air was also changed from a spike to a meteor smash, meaning opponents could now meteor cancel against down air, therefore making it harder for Marth to confirm kills off of dare. Another change made to Marth was to his weight, being dropped from 75 to 73. While this may not seem like a big change, this actually affects Fox. In NTSC melee, when Marth is hit by Fox's shine, he slides across the ground, allowing for Fox to follow up with moves such as grab. However, in the PAL version, due to the weight change, Marth is instead knocked down by shine, for he's ungrabbable in the knockdown state. As you may expect, tournaments held back then in Europe were played on the PAL version of Melee, and these include big tournaments with international talent, such as the B-Series, the Hair Series, and Dreamhacks preceding Rotterdam 2019, where they switched to NTSC 1.02. An easy way to tell if the game is running on PAL is to check the stock icons. PAL's stock icons are smaller and thus appear more spaced out, while NTSC's stock icons are bigger and closer together. Despite large tournaments playing on PAL, PAL has been largely phased out for NTSC 1.02. With the advent of Slippy, a custom version of Dolphin made for playing online with rollback netcode, which is played exclusively on NTSC 1.02, it seems that PAL has been largely forgotten about in the tournament sphere. One last thing I find funny that I want to point out is despite Kirby receiving a bunch of buffs to a decent amount of his moves, he is still considered the second worst character on the PAL tier list, though he's still better than Pichu. During the N64 era of Mario Party games and Mario Kart 64, the voice actors playing certain characters were different depending on the region. Out of the 8 characters in Mario Kart 64, half of its cast have different voice actors when comparing the Japanese and international releases. Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Wario all have different voice actors between the Japanese and international versions. In the Japanese release, Luigi is voiced by Julian Bartikoff, then translator for Nintendo of France, Peach is voiced by Asako Kozuki, Toad is voiced by Tomoko Maruno, and Wario is voiced by Thomas Spindler, then translator for Nintendo of Germany. In the international releases of the game, all four voice actors were replaced entirely. The role of Luigi and Wario were given to Charles Martinet, the voice actor for Mario, being his first time voicing Luigi and Wario. Meanwhile, the role of Peach went to the then manager of Nintendo of America's localization team, Leslie Swan, who also voiced a princess in Super Mario 64. And the role of Toad was given to Nintendo of America QA tester, Isaac Marshall. Here's some voice comparisons between the Japanese voices and the international voices. 
If you're not interested in this, skip to the timestamp here. Luigi is the top! I'm Luigi, number one. Yay, Peaches got it! Yeah, Peaches got it. Wario, ah! ah! it's gonna win! I'm a Wario, I'm a gonna win! Despite this, some games within the Mario franchise on N64 never received these voice changes. Take Mario Parties 1 and 2 for example. Releasing two years after the US release of Mario Kart 64, both the Japanese and international versions retain the Japanese version's voice actors. That being said, the game still contains some regional differences. In Mario Party 1, the most infamous change has to be the removal of religious references made by Luigi and Wario after losing a minigame. In the Japanese version, Luigi and Wario both say OH MY GOD! OH MY GOD! after losing a minigame, while in the international release, they have completely different lines. Luigi makes a sort of defeated sound MISS! Oh. While Wario instead says NO I MISSED! which roughly translates to Oh darn! or Oh crap! This line has commonly been misheard as, Do I missed, though if you listen closely, you can hear the S sound said by Wario. Another infamous change from the series is within the sequel, Mario Party 2. In the ending cutscene of Western Land, the original Japanese standoff was with revolvers, which were changed to yellow cork shooters in all other versions of the game. Another less notable change which I find funny is a change made to Professor Fun Guy. In the Japanese version, Professor Fun Guy is seen smoking this cool ass pipe. Unfortunately, due to the Mushroom Kingdom's rebellion against Big Tobacco in 1999, his pipe was confiscated in the international release of Mario Party 2, leaving him to be this stupid ass toad who isn't cool in the slightest. Skipping ahead 7 years to Mario Party 8, we come to our most infamous change in a Mario Party game to date. On the board, Shy Guy's Perplex Express, by landing on one of the green spaces within the board, there is a chance that an event involving Kamek will occur where he will swap one of the cards with another one. In the original release, before performing this, he says, Magic Koopa Magic, turn this train spastic, make this ticket tragic. To American audiences, there appears to be nothing wrong with this sentence. However, to British audiences, spastic is considered a slur against disabled individuals, particularly those with cerebral palsy and ALS. Due to this, the same day it was originally released in the UK, July 13th, 2007, Nintendo was forced to recall the game and eventually re-released the game on August 3rd, 2007 with the offending word replaced with erratic. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is the GameCube sequel to the N64 game Paper Mario, which continues the story of the previous game. Featuring numerous improvements to gameplay, updated visuals, a longer story, and a pretty neat postgame. TTYD has a great amount of changes between the Japanese and international versions, some including the removal of an implied murder of a toad, Pika and Lala's bunny ears being swapped for cat ears in order to distance the resemblance between the Playboy bunny, and the removal of one of Mario's speaking animations in European versions due to the resemblance of that animation looking like the hand gesture used by... Yeah... I'm sure that mistake won't happen again. Right. But by far the most interesting change made to TTYD comes from the fifth party member you acquire in Chapter 4, Vivian. Hinted at during an intermission between Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, Vivian, a member of the Shadow Sirens along with her sisters, Beldum and Marilyn, is introduced as a minor enemy until Chapter 4, where she turns against her sisters and goes along with Mario. During localization efforts, Vivian's gender was never unanimously agreed upon in each localization of the game. The original Japanese version of the game describes Vivian as someone who has the appearance of a girl, but is actually a boy. This sentiment is also shared within the French and Spanish localizations of the game. 
In the English and German versions of the game, Vivian is presented as a female with any mention of a boy being removed. However, the Italian version of the game presents Vivian as being a trans girl, mentioning how she used to be a man but is now a woman and proud of it. These references to Vivian's gender can be found in story dialogue, Gumbella's tattles, and Vivian's description from the party menu. Even with other characters, gender inconsistencies can be found. With Hooktail, they're referred to as a female, sometimes male for plot reasons, in the English versions, while in other versions, they're referred to as a male. On the flip side, Bonetail is referred to as a male in the English version, while in other versions, such as the Japanese version, they're referred to as a female. Pokemon Crystal is an updated version of the original Gen 2 games, Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver, which adds new features and supports a variety of changes, including changes within the game's story, quality of life fixes within the gameplay, and updated visuals which include spicy new animated Pokemon sprites. And the first instance of being able to choose your gender in a Pokemon game. So that's cool. But that doesn't matter. What does matter is Celebi. Have you ever wondered how to get Celebi in English versions of the game? Well, it's a very simple process, you see. First, turn off the game and find your Japanese copy of Pokemon Crystal plus your mobile Game Boy adapter. Turn on that copy of the game, make sure your game is connected to your mobile phone via the Pokemon Mobile Phone System GB, collect all 16 badges, get the GS ball from the trade corner attendant, get the GS ball to Kurt, wait a whole ass day, talk to him the next day, follow him into Elex Forest, put the GS ball into the shrine, and catch Celebi. Now, after doing all of that, you may be disappointed to hear that the Japanese version and international versions of the game can trade with each other. But, hey, at least you have Celebi now. Wait, 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 wait. What the hell is a mobile Game Boy adapter? Well, referred to as the Mobile Adapter GB in Japan, it's a peripheral for the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance that allows certain types of Japanese mobile phones to connect to the Mobile System GB service with the use of the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. Games that supported the service include Pokemon Crystal, Mario Kart Super Circuit, and most infamous of all, ESPN Great Outdoor Games Base 2002. If you couldn't already guess, this service, and therefore features that require the service, were only available in Japan. In Crystal, connecting to the service allows players to wirelessly trade and battle, access the Battle Tower, access the Pokemon News Machine, a monthly service that would broadcast compiled data of players across Japan, and allow players to view said data, play mini games, and participate in quizzes, and even receive an odd egg that has a 50% chance of the hatched Pokemon being shiny and being guaranteed to learn Dizzy Punch. All for a price, of course. When Crystal was eventually localized, this feature was scrubbed from the English versions of the game, with the only remnant of this feature being the Battle Tower, being accessible without the need of an adapter. While the service was only available for a short time, the features that were included within the service later served as an inspiration for features and subsequent games within the series. For example, the Trade Corner served as an inspiration for the Global Trade System, or GTS, a service where players can trade Pokemon over the internet by requesting one Pokemon for another. Throughout this video, we have seen multiple inconsistencies throughout games and the changes within them depending on their region. But what I haven't mentioned is that some regions CAN be consistent on changes made to games released in that region. The top dog when it comes to consistent changes made to games in the region is Germany who have infamously censored any excessive resemblance or violence of any kind, mainly in FPS games, with the reasoning for such censorship being that the Federal Department of Media Harmful to Young Persons do not want to expose the youth to content they deem harmful. Any games that show excessive amounts of violence are added to a list of media harmful to young people and are only sold to adults who request a product at stores that hold said product. This has affected multiple games within the 18 plus FPS sphere. Let's take Half-Life 1 for example. 
In the German version of Half-Life 1, the human Grunt enemy was replaced by a robot version of the Grunt, who you may recognize if you play any multiplayer on Half-Life 1, aptly named Robot Grunt. The change was made in order to bypass a law in Germany in regards to the killings of humans in media. Meanwhile, with the scientists and security guards, their death animation was changed to this animation where they sit down with their legs crossed and their heads tilted to the side. Eventually, Valve released a patch that added back in the uncensored effects and models for all German players. Other Valve games weren't safe from German censorship, however. In each main iteration of the Counter-Strike series, when killed, instead of ragdolling to the ground, you instead slowly lie down on the ground with your hands over your head. In some games, the blood color was either changed to yellow or removed entirely. Over time, however, Germany finally got a hold of itself and fixed their laws regarding violence in video games, allowing Valve to patch out the censored animations. In CSGO, these animations can still be viewed, though not in the normal release of the game. In the normal release, the censored animations were eventually removed entirely due to an update where Valve redone the animations. Instead, these animations have to be viewed in the pre 1 9 2013 demo viewer version where the launch option dash LV then needs to be added, allowing you to view these animations once again. Another Valve game with censorship made to it is Team Fortress 2. To avoid that nice adults only rating, multiple edits were made. For example, when shooting an enemy, the blood effect is replaced with sparks and oil to give the appearance that the players are robots instead of humans. When fragged via an explosion, instead of the regular blood splatter effect, the effect is replaced with the silly game effect from the birthday mode. The last notable change to the German version is to the Ubersaw and Extinguisher textures, where the blood present on both weapons were removed entirely in the German version. In 2018, at around the same time other Valve games were being uncensored, German TF2 players were able to uncensor their version of the game by sending in a support ticket to Valve, requesting the flag for low violence to be removed from their account. German censorship laws also affected games outside Valve's library of titles. Three different iterations of the Call of Duty series, specifically World at War, Modern Warfare 2, and Black Ops, were censored in Germany. In World at War and Black Ops, the violence was heavily toned down, and any Nazi imagery within the game was removed. Additionally, in World at War, the Nazi Zombies mode was removed entirely, Though reinstated in Black Ops 1 as Treyarch dropped the Nazi from Zombies later on. The reason that all Nazi imagery was removed from the German versions of these games is because of the Strafgesetzbuch, or simply the German Penal Code, where in section 86a it states that any use of symbols of unconstitutional organizations, such as swastikas or any other similar symbols outside of things such as teaching, art, or anything under the social adequacy clause is strictly forbidden. Because back then video games did not fall under the social adequacy clause, any Nazi imagery had to be censored from German releases of the game. The other COD game mentioned, Modern Warfare 2, was censored in Germany, Japan, and Russia due to the infamous No Russian mission. In the German and Japanese version, shooting any of the civilians will result in an instant mission failure, while the Russian version removed the mission entirely for obvious reasons. Before finishing up, I'd like to mention some other regional differences that I thought were cool, but were either too long, essentially making for their own video, or didn't have many major changes made to it. The Japanese version of Super Mario Sunshine had some additional dialogue cut from international releases. In a scene where Mario and Co are inspecting the goop on the runway, when the scene starts to focus on Peach, there is some dialogue where Mario and Toadsworth speak about Mario starting a new career path, although it is somewhat hard to hear. I imagine you'll be spending a fair amount of time at the princess's side. Hmm. Look like a Mario's gonna have to find a job. Trying to start a new career at- The Japanese version of the Simpsons arcade game, released in 1991, 
had changes made to it that indirectly made the game a lot easier. For example, a player can now extend their health past 100% and up to 300%. Along with that, players regain their health before starting the next level. Bosses also have less health, and weapons such as a slingshot were given buffs, making it easier to KO enemies. On the topic of games made easier, and to round off the video, we have Pac-Man World 2, where the game was made ridiculously easier in Japan, to the point where any semblance of challenge was removed entirely. For one, ghosts no longer kill you in one hit like they do in the US release, rather they now take off a slice of health just like common enemies do. Another mind-boggling change made is that the thorns in the Japanese version no longer deal damage to Pac-Man. Why the devs thought this change was important, I'll never know. Another set of changes come from the levels, and here you'll see my point when I say any semblance of challenge was straight out removed. In Canyon Chaos, for example, every bottomless pit was filled in with some water, making platforming that requires even a single gram of skill meaningless, and in Treewood Forest, the saws were made much, much slower, and some were even outright removed. If a list of the world's easiest games ever come out, the Japanese version of Pac-Man World 2 is definitely going to be on that list. Before I end the video, I just want to once again give a special thanks to Speeps Highway for helping me out with information about Sonic Adventure, the guys over at the cutting room floor for documenting most of these changes mentioned in this video, and everyone who I use footage from, you will be credited in the description in some way. If I missed out any crucial information, let me know in the comments so I can update the description accordingly. Anyways, I'm out of here.